Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today on PM72 Summit to learn more about portfolio road mapping and project management in Jira for everyone. Let me just quickly introduce myself. I'm Nikki, co-founder and product manager at Jexo. Jexo is an Atlassian marketplace partner that helps teams prioritize, plan and track their work in Jira. Before me and my co-founder Biro started Jexo, I was working in a company that was focusing on project management and delivery and developing AI-driven project management platforms. Here I learned a thing or two about project management and then I used, further used this knowledge while running our own company. In this presentation, I'll be mainly focusing on road mapping and I will do a short demo of one of our Jira apps only. If you would like, you can visit our booth on the after parties where we talk about where we can talk about our other apps, project management or anything related. We will be also giving a discount codes for our products. So do pop in if you're interested. In this talk, we will have a look at how to plan projects in today's agile world, differences between Gantt charts and roadmaps. We will cover how to build a roadmap in theory and then building roadmap using Swanly and Jira. And finally, we will have a look at the key differences between Swanly and advanced roadmaps. Project management as concept is old. A good example is Great Pyramid of Giza. Ancient records say that there were managers overseeing the completion of each of its four phases. And the same comes for the Great Wall of China. Although there has been some type of project management since our early, early civilization days, Project management in the modern sense started in 20th century with invention of Gantt chart, critical path method and foundation of project management institute in early 60s to help promote project management as a profession and develop a common project management terminology and techniques. However, the 21st century brought a more lightweight approach to managing projects with rise of agile methodologies. Instead of waterfall project management, planning and scheduling every single activity of the whole project before it starts, it's now becoming more and more common to align teams on the project mission and give them autonomy and freedom to plan and deliver the work themselves. This is all possible with the help of frameworks like, for example, OKRs and restructuring teams from single function departments to across functional teams. However, this creates a new set of challenges. First of all, using some of the old project management tools like Gantt charts can lead to over planning and micromanagement. Instead of giving teams autonomy, we sit them down and create their work schedule, estimate the work, and then expect them to be creative and accountable. If you handhold and micromanage your team, you can't expect them to feel an ownership and make their own decisions when the time comes. Key to managing cross-functional teams to deliver the projects is to align them on project vision, define a high-level plan with milestones or the initiatives, if you like, and when everyone is aligned on the mission and high-level plan, teams can make their decisions themselves. It's important for teams not to close themselves into their team bubble, but communicate with others and give clear updates on their work progress. Managers, on the other side, focus on the high-level plan and oversee the delivery and help teams when necessary. The key here is to have the right communication tools that don't encourage micromanagement, but serve as a platform that teams and managers can use to communicate. So this is all easily said, but hardly done, right? So let's have a look at the Gantt charts, one of the oldest tools for project management and roadmaps, their younger sibling. Gantt chart is a project management tool in the form of a bar chart that displays a detailed schedule of the task. Or in the other words, Gantt chart helps cross-functional teams understand the work required of them and the order in which tasks should be completed so they can move on to the next stage of the project. A Gantt chart is basically useful for setting up a detailed plan on how the team will complete the project. To give you an example that we are all familiar with, advanced roadmaps in Jira are a Gantt chart. You clearly see the key initiatives, scheduled tasks, and 
uh, create different versions and what if scenarios of your project plan. Now, don't get me wrong, Gantt charts aren't for waterfall projects only. While they may be simpler ways for visualizing Agile projects, Gantt charts can be used in Agile as well. However, the way Gantt charts present and track projects plan easily encourages micromanagement. And that can ultimately kill your autonomous teams, as I talked about earlier. While using Gantt charts, we often tend to schedule from the initiative to a single task level, which ultimately means that the plan soon becomes outdated and therefore they are very hard to maintain. On the other hand, there are roadmaps. A project roadmap, when done right, gives you a high level overview of project initiatives and milestones. It's basically a bird eye view of your project that helps align everyone from teams to managers and stakeholders on the project's key milestones and progress. There are different ways to visualize a roadmap, but one of the most popular ones is the timeline roadmap. Similar to Gantt charts, timeline roadmaps allow you to plan key activities on the timeline and create a high-level project schedule. They're a great way to align everyone on priorities and key dates and the milestones. And as opposed to Gantt charts, timeline roadmaps are often high-level helping to communicate the project strategy in the simplest way possible. The great example of roadmaps is Jira Project Roadmap, where you can easily plan high-level initiatives, aka epics. So to sum it up, the key benefits of having a roadmap for your projects are that it helps you quickly communicate project plans and goals. Project Roadmap is a high-level visual document and this makes it easy to quickly share important information to stakeholders and to other teams. It also helps you manage stakeholder expectations by setting goals, budget, timeline, and so on early on. And that way everyone is on the same page from the start. Roadmaps also help make decisions. Everyone in your project can refer to your project roadmap where they can see the most important goals and activities which will help them to prioritize tasks and make decisions quicker. And finally, if your roadmap is up to date, it's a great tool for status updates. So how can we go about creating our own roadmap? Before creating the roadmap itself, there are a few activities that need to be done beforehand. One great tool you can use is a Project Canvas template. Project Canvas helps you define goals of your project, budget and resources, time in which this pro project should be completed, who your customer is, and finally, you will identify key milestones and initiatives and potential risks. If you would like, you can download this Project Canvas template here so you can use it in your next project. Once you defined your goals and strategy together with key milestones, you can start creating your own roadmap that you can then expand to the plan. One important point while creating the roadmap is to give ownership. Make sure that it's clear who is responsible for which initiative and that they have a right team to execute. Roadmap then can be used as a key document during your project kickoff meeting and teams can use it to expand it into the plan. So this was all great theory. Let me show you how you can create the roadmap in practice in Jira and Swanley. The thing about Swanley is that it's not just a Jira roadmap. It's a roadmap timeline with a list view that is similar to a Jira Gantt chart and a report view that you can access for drill down information about activities progress. I have this business project canvas here that I use with my team to define our project we already defined the time frame of the project and the key milestones and the initiatives. First, we need to create projects and initiatives in Jira. So in this example, projects represent teams and epics in the project represent key initiatives and milestones. Take all initiatives you define in the project canvas and add them to Jira as epics. Once this is done, we can go to Swanley and start planning. You can access Swanly from the main Jira navigation menu under the Apps tab. First thing you will need to do when you come to Swanly is to decide which view you would like to use, if issues or the releases. 
So because I created my initiatives as epics, I will go and use the issue view. I need to import the project in Swanley and then I will be able to see projects as a swim lines on the timeline together with the issues I created here under the plus add issue panel. But before I go into actually scheduling initiatives on the roadmap, there is one feature in Swanly that I can make use of to create my roadmap much faster. I can use templates in Swanly to create stages and also assign their default duration. This will make my road mapping process much, much faster. It's not mandatory to use templates and stages when working with Swanly, but it's something many find useful when creating roadmaps with a top-down approach when the scope of the initiatives isn't yet clear clearly defined and estimated. In general, you can refer to your previous similar projects to see what were average lengths of different stages and start from there. And now it's time to start scheduling our initiatives on the timeline. To schedule initiative on the timeline, I'll first open plus add issue panel. And here I can find all issues from my imported projects. There are also filters here if I need to find some specific issue. There are two ways I can schedule initiative on the timeline. I can either schedule by selecting the template I created earlier. And if I defined the default duration of stages, then after selecting the start date, the end date is automatically calculated together with the dates for its stages. So if I'm happy with the dates, I can go and add initiative to the roadmap. You can also group your timeline by templates to get a different dimension to your project roadmap. Second approach is to just drag and drop issues on the timeline from the panel. This is a bit faster at start, but you don't make use of the templates you created earlier. The length of the activity is predefined and depends on the zoom level you're currently in. After you create the roadmap, you can start assigning ownership over the initiatives. It's quite simple to do this in Swanley. Just click on the initiative on the roadmap and select the assignee. Once you assigned your initiatives, you can also group your timeline by assignee or use an assignee filter to see the initiatives that belong to the certain owner. Now, when you have your roadmap ready, you can start working with initiative owners on defining the scope. You can either create scope in Swanly directly, or you can define scope from Jira. Either way, scope will always appear in Swanly activity report view in the real time. To go one step further, if your teams use any of the estimation methods like story points, complexity points, or time tracking in Jira, you will be able to track key activity progress based on its scope, aka child issues from the Swanley report panel. The progress information gets updated automatically as your team moves their tasks through the delivery. That means that Swanley report view is always up to date and can be used for status updates for your stakeholders. You can easily share a report by clicking on the share button and send the link to the report. Swanley, however, doesn't need to be only used as an issue timeline. You can also use it for release management. You can simply create cross-project release roadmap, manage cross-project releases and get release reports to understand the progress. But I won't go too much into detail about the release management aspect of Swanley, but if you're interested, come to our Jigsaw so booth on the after parties and I can do a short demo for you. So what are the key differences between Swanley and advanced roadmaps? We get this question quite a lot, so I decided to include it here as well. You can achieve almost the same results using any of these tools. They're both made for project management. However, there are two key differentiators of Swanley. Swanley is much cheaper and simpler than advanced roadmaps. Advanced roadmaps are available on Jira Premium that costs $13.5 per user, as opposed to $7.5 per user for Jira Standard. Of course, Jira Premium comes with other features like advanced security and Jira administration. But if you would be switching to Jira Premium only to get cross-project roadmaps, that would be quite expensive fun. Swanly, on the other hand, starts at $1.5 per user and gets cheaper after you reach 200 users on your Jira instance. And it's also completely free for up to 10 users. And that's a quite big difference, isn't it? Second advantage of Swanly is that it's simpler. 
we wanted to make sure that everyone can come to Swanley and understand what's the plan and what's the progress of the project. All changes that you do in Swanley are reflected in Jira in the real time and vice versa. So your master plan is always up to date. And to create reports, you don't need to do anything really, just simply click on the activity on the timeline and you have it. So if you are looking for something simple without too much admin overhead and setting up and it won't cost you arm and a leg, then Swanly is the right tool for you. And that's about it for this presentation about portfolio road mapping and project management in Jira for everyone. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end. If you would like to chat more about what we just talked about or anything related to project and product management, you can always visit our booth in the after parties where you can find me and our team. There's also a project canvas template from this presentation available to download, so definitely go and check that out. Have a great day and enjoy the next presentation.